how's it going? My other platforms where I'm streaming live as well. I'm just gonna make sure I can get go public over there. Okay. So hello, welcome. Oh hi, how's it going? Um, let me just tweak this a little bit. Okay. So how is it going? It is now Wednesday. It's 3 p.m. Pacific um, on June 10th, 2020. And uh, this is, oh, I don't know, number 12, the 12th week of checking in live um, consistently for 12 weeks now. So that's pretty great. Um, I am happy to be here. I'm happy that I'm able to be here. I'm happy that I can share some art making inspiration, share company connection, and tune in in present time with you and see what you are uh, into making in your art studio, working in your creative process. Um, bringing in the layers, all the layers of the, um, <laughs> the, the present moment, who you are individually, yourself, what's happening in our current times out in, uh, in the world and the larger zooming out, the larger uh, picture, uh, planetary, evolutionary, uh, timeline um, of, of what is happening and just like staying really present with all of those things and keeping perspective and I think also just you know staying involved and engaged with your creative practice which is what I am doing I am uh, here to be present with you and to listen deeply and to just share with you what I'm making to share some tips to share some of what I am making in this art studio here today. This is what I have been working on for weeks and weeks now. Uh, continuing with my uh, series on metamorphosis, transformation, and um, my butterfly series, which really is inspired by change. It's inspired by positive change and it's inspired by uh, going through the process of thank you of uh, the the evolutionary life of a butterfly as a metaphor for our times um, I also thought it would be fun to do a little bit of a flip through of my mixed media art journal that I work with on a consistent basis um, to process and do really like art-based, creative, process-oriented, and focused um, inner work, inner work in my inner world. So this is just a, a, a notebook, and it's an art journal. This happens to be a mixed media one. I do this with children, with kids online every week. We have so much fun just uh, finding the joy in our everyday art practice and the um, awesome things that you can do with art supplies and repurposed art supplies like today. This is from today's session with my 12 o'clock Wednesday class. We used bubble wrap. Yes. If you see these dots here, this is bubble wrap. So it's repurposed small size bubble wrap. And when the kids aren't trying to pop it and make all this noise with it, <laughs> they are learning how to use it as an uh, upcycled art tool. And um, so it's been so much fun. It's basically like a stamp. So you can repurpose your everyday bubble wrap and hello, <laughs> I see three artists over on Instagram. How fun, welcome. So nice to see you here today. So anyway, we are we worked with complementary colors and we worked with some bubble wrap stamping, uh, mixed media, texturizing and layering. And it is so much fun, it is so therapeutic. Uh, 
It is such a positive use of our energy and expressing ourselves in um, really without words, expressing our feelings with color, expressing our feelings through um, inspired action. And we are doing patterns and texturizing. It is so much fun. And then what I'm doing in this butterfly painting here is I'm continuing to work in layers and like the one behind me you can see this is the finished monarch butterfly this one um i'm not sure which variety this is i'm kind of just going along i'm working with the colors i'm working with the colors of complementary color it's uh, one of the composition tips that i like to work with is when you do color matching to work with complementary colors or colors that also look nice together and those are um, next two colors. They're also known as astro. Um, oh my gosh, not astrologous. <laughs> I just blanked out. Um, oh my gosh, I just blanked out. Astrologus is an uh, awesome herb, but um, it's a it's a it's a plant. But I just blanked out. That's so funny. It's another A word. Anyway, so um, colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. These are complementary colors. These are opposite, opposite each other on the color wheel. And so green, or actually they're, they're, they're opposite, they're cools and warms is what I want to say, that color scheme. Um, this is a little color wheel here. So I'm working with oranges and greens. And in the one behind me, I use the complementary, the blues and oranges. So anyway, um, these colors kind of, they pop and they contrast each other. And then there's texture in the wings of the butterfly. Um, all right, Judy, nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by. Have a great day. Um, so I can't believe I forgot that word. That's so funny. I teach this every day. Anyway, <laughs> um, I know there's a term for what happens when your brain does that. I'm not even going to say that live, but <laughs> this is where I'm going to be starting up today is putting in some layers and some details on my wings and um, yeah and I'll just stay on just a little while until it feels right hey Christina so it's so nice to see the artists and friends over in, in Instagram and, and in, in Facebook I see some of my friends and family hello and this is really why I do this not so much to to be a talking head or to blab, but um, to to connect with connect with each other because we are still sheltering in place here. Um, we do get out and do walks, and it's been nicer because the trails have opened up more and more. Not all of them, but some. So it really takes uh, some of the helps us feel free to be able to go to a couple of the greener spaces again. But we are, I'm staying home a lot, and so um, it's just nice. I really haven't done so many uh, social things at all. Um, so I, um, yeah, I think I'm going to go see my dad for Father's Day, so I'm looking forward to that, and saw my parents and my mom for Mother's Day, so hello. <laughs> I think you're watching, Mom. But um, I, yeah, it's been like really, really quiet. So this is a great social opportunity for me to connect with you. Hello. And um, I just love it. So it's, no matter how long I stay on, I just know that you're here and I love it. Okay, I wanted to do a little bit of a, a flip through. I started to talk about this book and then I stopped. So this is an art journal. And I'll just show you a couple things. So this is a work in progress here. And this has a cool background, a frame, and some gesso for an art piece here. This one is similar, but I did start to create a butterfly study here. And so, oops, there's some, I need to glue that down. There's some um, many mixed media layers on here. Uh, and a butterfly, this is primer or gesso, and I'm gonna work with that next with some, probably some paint markers. Um, oh, here's just some fun patterning. I mean, this is all just like art therapy. These things, this is not something I would ever sell or 
maybe, okay, here's me practicing faces. So I teach this too. It's pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> Because I'm learning as I go. I am a lifelong learner. And every time I teach a class, every single time I learn something um, about myself or about art making. This was a fun one with just lots of cool patterns and doodles. And um, very therapeutic. So nice. So soothing to the soul. Just art making for me is balm to the soul. Oh, here's one. I really like this one. This is a butterfly. So this is all mixed media. So this is like what I do for, for fun and what I do for, um, yeah, like my, my personal inner work. And then, you know, I teach this too, but um, I'm learning every single time I make something using mixed media or any media, I learn something about art making. So that's really fun. Here's just a fun background I haven't done anything with yet, but it has lots of layers. And I just really like that. And then here is another piece that we did in one of my classes. So you can tell that I like butterflies. <laughs> it's a big theme. It's a big theme right now. And then, oh, here's a double spread. See that one? So I thought I would share these just to show a little bit more of how, um, what I, what kinds of art, oh, I don't know, practices, I would say, things that, I like to do to keep my work uh, to keep the maybe the paintings on canvas fresh and to to mix it up and and um, I am teaching so I'm making a lot of artwork every day when I teach um, this is when I started today I was just working with a new stencil that I picked up so that's pretty fun stencils are great fun and this is what I did today with my class so we're gonna continue this next week my students and I, we all had some kind of thing going. So that's pretty fun. So moving on to the butterfly, I would love to know what anyone is working on. What are you guys working on these days? I don't know if you're still there, Ava. Or Reasonable Mind, what are you working on? <laughs> so what I thought I would do right now is continue on this butterfly. And... Um, I am using uh, I am using these gouache acrylics still, so I'm gonna mix these up here. Hey, Catherine, this is why I love this because Catherine was my student a long time ago at West Adams Preparatory High School. Hi, sweetheart. So she, um, that, I probably haven't seen her since 2011, maybe. Nice to see you here, even though it's virtual. Oh, I think I saw you at SciArc in 2012 in the summer, remember? I think that's when I saw you last time. So um, I'm going to mix up some paint here. I am using matte medium. Nothing waiting to get us. <laughs> oh, Ava. <laughs> so Ava, these are some of the new things I got. Well, I got this. This is a fun eraser I just got today. It's called Vanish. It's a four-in-one eraser. Um, and I thought I would share this. This is... I order things from, okay, it's backwards, but I order things from uh, Jerry's Artorama. They seem to be the most reasonable sort of online uh, place to order art supplies to, to for things that I need for my studio these days. So this is a four-in-one eraser. I just got it today in the mail. It came in the, the USPS. And it was recommended by one of the teachers I like to watch and learn from. And she has really good tips on supplies for mixed media. So I picked up one of these and I'm excited to use this to do some erasing <laughs> and drawing. Um, and then I also got some more, these are Posca pens. Posca pens are acrylic paint markers. The only negative thing about Posca pens, I have to say, even though I really, really like them, they're not refillable. So that's the, the icky part about these, is the plastic is, uh, you just have to recycle it. It's, they are safe for children. They are, they do not smell. They're water-based opaque paint in a marker. 
and they have that little ball in there and they're amazing and I do a lot of work with uh, the Posca paints, paint pens um, on these pieces. I did that. All these little white dots here in that um, Monarch Butterfly are from Posca paint pens. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, but I am looking forward to sharing what I'm doing today. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be working. I have my water here and... Uh, as always, the, all of the supplies, not the eraser, because that's so new, but everything else is listed in the description to these videos on all three platforms. I, and they're there for every video. So the, the, there's even a link to Jerry's. So I, right now I'm going to start mixing a paint. And, um, yeah, I provide the link to Jerry's where you can actually see the things I'm using. And I don't receive any money from them at all. I'm not an affiliate or... An employee or whatever I don't receive any um, um, commission or whatever I just like to share what I use that I know that works well for me and then you can see for yourself what you like but it really helps me to learn about these things like I love learning about really good erasers or um, there's a few other things that I've been learning about okay this is white uh, a lot of pens, actually. There's, I've been learn, I've been learning about what different drawing materials. So uh, maybe I'll share those next week. There's some really fine pens for drawing because I am doing more drawing. I'm teaching more drawing right now. So um, I've been learning about and using, and gathering up new drawing supplies. So pens, water soluble pencils like Stabilo Alls. That's actually in my list, I think. Those are water soluble drawing uh, pencils, like colored pencils. They are pretty amazing. So right now I'm just, again, I'm working with this reference image. I'll hold it up and show you. It's kind of a black and white. Oh, I don't think I'm live. What happened? Is the live working in, what happened here? Oh, it should be working. Oh, hi, Catherine. Um, what happened with Facebook? Is it live still? I don't know if it if it's still live. It's looking a little weird. I don't know if it's still live over there. Anyway, um, sorry. Something weird happened. Anyway, I um, I don't know. Let's see. So anyway, uh, this is the reference image I'm working with. And as you can see, it's black and white. So I'm making up my own colors based on like what I shared before about these colors, uh, an orange and a, which is a warm color and the cool blues, uh, I'm sorry, green, it's a blue green. It's kind of like a, yeah, it's a blue green. I would call it a blue green or, 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 or it's a mixture of greens. It actually has quite a marbleized effect with it in it the way that I put the background in there but um, I wanted to do the reason why I did green and not blue is because I've already done the blue in the monarch butterfly and I want these paintings to look very different from each other even though they are um, all butterflies and I just I want each butterfly and they're the same size canvas these are 16 by 16 inches square by two inches wide gallery wrap I do want the butterflies to be different views or perspectives. So this is a side profile. The one behind me is a flat, like aerial of a butterfly with its wings opened up flat. And then I wanted the colors to kind of coordinate but not be exact. So hence, this is like oranges, warms, similar to Monarch, but it'll, it'll be different looking for sure. I'm not gonna, there's a different palette going on here. And then the background is greens kind of there's some kind of like green, green with a little hint of turquoise, as you can see. And that kind of syncs up with the one behind me. So these could actually, you know, viably be next to each other on the wall. So that's, that's the way I start to put together like a collection is to have the colors coordinate, but not too matchy matchy. And yet, you know, there's a possibility that they could be like a diptych or connect 
through their color uh, relationship. Okay, so right now I'm going to come back to this painting. I don't know if it's still if, if Facebook is still live. I don't know what happened. I don't know. I can't tell. I don't think it is. Maybe it is. Let's see. I'm not sure. Are you? Is it live over here? Let me see. I don't know. I don't know. Something weird happened. Anyway. Oh yeah, it's live. I think it's live. Okay. So anywho, um, so I'm gonna put the white. Then I'm gonna put the orange. This is a uh, just a nice permanent scarlet. So it is like a red, but it's a red orange from what I recall. Yes. And I'm just putting them down on my palette here. And I'm gonna use a little bit of this burnt sienna, which is a nice orangey brown. It's beautiful. You could also make this color, but it does come in the tube here. And I'm also gonna use a permanent yellow deep. And uh, I'm also using the matte medium and I'm also using my pigment powders today. And I'm gonna, and I have this is, I always like to use this little palette knife to get the powders out because the powders, they're kind of, they're very precious. And so you don't wanna like, and you definitely don't need a whole, you wouldn't pour out a whole thing, obviously. It's just be wasteful. But just like a, take a little bit like that. It's something like I would like to do with these guys and then mix it with the matte medium, but I'm not, I'm not quite ready yet. So we'll get to those a little bit later, but, um, I'm just going to mix these paints up here with the brush and I'm going to be using, this is a nice new flat brush. Oh, and I need some medium because I do want it to be, so glazing is when you put layers with a matte medium, or a, a medium, I should say, an acrylic polymer medium. So it could be either matte or gloss. Um, and it dilutes the paint and it creates a more transparency or a trans, uh, like a, a layer, transparent sort of, a, it dilutes it but different than water. There's still that, that heavy, that weight and that body. And I'm just kind of going, oh, look at that. I'm just kind of going over what I had before now, but I'm adding a little, another glazed layer. And so glazing is something, um, I don't know, if Ava, if you've heard of glazing, but glazing is a way to, to add a beautiful dimension and it, it adds a lot of light actually. Glazing lets the light come through in between the layers and it, it's, it's a way of layering that's, it's not just blobbing on acrylic paint to have it be, because really, really what acrylic paint is, it's plastic. And um, that, that actually su surprised my students today. They're like, plastic? And it's like, yeah, it's a polymer. So these <laughs> acrylic paints were invented, you know, this is around the same time plastics came to be in the 50s, I believe. And so the, the, they are opaque, but if you add a glazing medium, like a, a matte medium or a gloss medium, you know, but definitely like a clear liquid medium, then it will, that's when you, that's a glaze that creates a glaze where it's, it thins it out, but it's not, it's not thin like water. It's, it's thicker. So, um, yeah pretty nice and they 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 I mean it is all plastic it dries pretty quickly and uh, it's quite hot where I am here in Southern California so my paints have been drying very quickly these days faster than I want sometimes I was teaching a watercolor class yesterday with a group of children and uh, they were like six to ten years old it's so cute oh my gosh can't even tell you how <laughs> I was laughing they were so cute we were painting wildflowers and the student, she's six years old and she had her front teeth missing. She was so adorable. And she said, and we were painting, I was teaching them to paint red clover wildflowers. And she says, can I say something? And she says, did you know that the, in the clover is where the fairies live? 
And I was like, wow, really? And she just kept talking about with all of us, there was like six of us, how that's where the fairies live. They live in the clover, the clover wildflowers. That And the clovers, they, they grow in the grass, right? They're kind of, I don't know if they would be considered weeds. I like them, but they grow all over the place here in our grassy parks. And they're like those little bunched, they're really pretty. So we were painting those and she's like, just kept talking about how at her house where the clover is, that's where all the fairies live. And it was really cute and fun. Really made my day. And um, she was, she's, you know, all her conviction, like she knows, she's seen them and that is real. And I love that because that's for me where it's at is the magic and nature. And um, it was so sweet. So and I love the six-year-old, um, the man, you know, her, her, her conviction was so strong and she knows that to be true. So that was really awesome to hear that yesterday. And so I'm just going over in these layers and I'm adding paint, just glazing, 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 glazing the areas in the wings and uh i mean i think that is going to be my focus today is glazing and you can also do glazing with the the medium the clear gel medium liquid medium and the pigment powders that's also glazing because the combination of these two is actually like a paint this is a pigment, thank you. This is a pigment, right? This is mica powders, mica minerals. And then this is, whoops, this is the glazing uh, fluid. It's called a fluid medium. And when you combine the two, you're actually making a form of, you know, it's a paint. Essentially, that's what paint is, pigment and a medium. Um, so I'm just going over and, and, and adding some more layers and, and glazing. And um, the thing is, I used to be like a big fan of gloss, and I am still gloss, medium, high gloss, gloss, gloss. I want it really shiny. But I learned from this one art teacher that I like to, to learn from. She is all about matte medium. And I was like, oh, matte medium. And I didn't really, I thought, I have to just see what that's all about. And it's really just, it's a matte finish. It's not a shiny finish, which I thought might be kind of boring. But actually, I really like it because, I don't know, I just like it. It's different. And then what you can do is if you really have to have that shiny gloss medium look, you can varnish your painting with a spray that is a gloss or high gloss. And then you get that sheen that you're, if you're looking for that kind of effect. So... The way that you finish a painting, and even like in process, if you're doing glazing, you can, you know, you can mix and match glosses and mattes, or you can experiment and do, depends on the style of painting that you're doing, you may not want that shininess. You may want that matte finish. So that's a really fun thing to think about too when you're doing uh, this kind of work. Um, working with acrylics, I'm talking about um, and also gouache paints. Gouache paints are naturally matte. And what creates the matte finish in a gouache paint is the gypsum, is the chalk. So one of the things that, you know, I like about gouache paint is that it has the, it's water soluble and it is, it does activate with water. Uh, it's, it's an open system. Whereas acrylics are more closed, once they're dry, they seal up and the molecules close. Uh, gouache is more of an open system. They remain water soluble until you put a sealer or a varnish over them, like an acrylic one, plastic one. But they do have a matte finish until you uh, seal them up too with something shiny, like let's say a gloss medium. So the chalk, gouache has chalk in it. Gouache paint is actually a watercolor paint, like our, the, the watercolor pans and the paints. And then it has, so it has that watercolor, it has the pigments, but then it has 
chalk or gypsum, which is another um, selenite, actually. The selenite crystal is a gypsum from the gypsum family. And so the gypsum is chalk, just like chalk that you would use to... Now I'm going to get my burnt sienna. Um, the chalk that you use to do like sidewalk chalk or write on a chalkboard. So that chalkiness is a mat has a mattifying effect. So just something to consider when you're choosing paints too, is you can, you know, really, uh, you can achieve a matte finish by using uh, um, gouache paints. Now the paint I'm using is a, is a hybrid and I've talked about this a lot, but it's also in the in the description. I'm using a, a hybrid paint that's acryl gouache. It's an acryl gouache mix. It's a blend. It's a hybrid. That's what it looks like. So they're acrylic, plastic, and they are gouache. So this is like a new invention, and I've talked at length about this. So I wanted to see what would happen, um, you know, using... I, I saw these paints and because I actually wanted to work with those paints and I was just going to mix the two together on my own and then I saw that this company Turner actually make makes it and I was like all right I gotta try this and I, I, I like them I mean it's definitely different than just plain gouache or simple acrylic basic acrylic um, pure separate paints using the hybrid but I, I like it I mean these are just tiny little tubes this is kind of like their starter kit um, it comes with I don't know, 12 colors and a little box and all that. And I talk about this in the earlier videos, but it, it, I, I like them. They're fun. And so all these butterfly paintings are actually using the acryl gouache. And um, I put that, those are all on my list over on the Jerry site. So you can see the, in the description. If it's not there now, it'll be there later. But it's also in my previous videos, too. I always have the link there. And you can go see for yourself, and you'll see, like, what's out there. But, I mean, I, I like it. They're kind of, they're very creamy. They're, they're kind of smooth. So they blend really well. Um, and now I'm going to hold up what I'm doing. I'm just going over with the yellow now. And, incidentally, I'm using the same brush. This is a newer brush. Um called a Princeton company and it's a wash size 3 8 I don't know I'm just using it I like it uh, I got it I think in a set of five or something it's reasonably priced so I'm just coming in here with this yellow so I can hold up what I'm doing I'll give you a look and then I'm going to start to whoops mix my um, I do like to use my fingers you can actually use you can use your fingers. You can put down the medium. So I just put a little bit of the the medium right here, just the plain medium. Where is it? Right here in this palette. This comes with the paint set. This palette. It is plastic, but um, it's pretty good. And I'm just using the gel medium on my finger to kind of to smooth out and to uh, kind of blend what I just did. So it's a, it, you can use your finger and a water even sometimes if you want to blend or, or smooth out. Okay. So I'm going to hold up what I have, you know, the area that you're working on. If it's too, if, it's, if you want to mix it, optically mix. So this is what I've got. It's, it looks basically the same. I'm just doing glazing. So I'm putting in layers and what I'm going to do next is mix up a little, uh, group a little a few little sections of the pigment powders in my palette here I have three that I'm working with today that I'm using this particular painting uh, brilliant gold this one is citrine which is like a yellow lemon yellow and this one is a pink gold or rose gold and I'm just gonna bring them into the area where the matte medium is and like I said before it's so important just to get the amount that you need because um, you want to conserve, not waste these things. They're very precious, like precious metals. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little dab here and then get my gel medium and just kind of make, ooh, make a little uh, 
nothing. A little group. And I'm also going to get a brush to work with. It's going to be a round brush. And I'm going to mix with that too because this, this little area is kind of small. So I just made, and you really want to get the lid on there ASAP. Okay. So I just created a little, I'm starting with the citrine. It's right here. See that there? It's kind of hard to see. So um, anyway, I'll just put it on here. So I'm just going to put this on my, okay, if you don't totally mix the medium, powders fly, which is not a big deal. Not a big deal. Okay, so I'm just going to bring in some of that. So, okay, let's see. Okay. Ooh. Let's see. So here's what's going on here. Just bringing in some. Now I'm, I'm glazing with the pigments, and they're going right into those lighter areas of the butterfly. The lighter, the lighter sections, the the markings on the wings, and I'm just glazing in that citrine, lemony, yellow gold mica powder and um, okay and then I need a little bit more of this gel media oh here it is okay, I couldn't see it okay and uh, yeah so we've been watching some really good programming lately maybe I'll talk about that we've been watching um, documentaries and um, also watched a film last night made in 2016 called Birth of a Nation. And um, it was quite intense. So it's not the Birth of a Nation that was made in 1915, but it's a new version, 2016. So if you're looking for anything interesting to some good educational, historical, kind of biopic, I would say, more of a historical movie, a little bit of a bio, bio element. Um, that was good. I highly recommend that movie. It's called Birth of a Nation, year 2016. And then another documentary, ooh, yeah. A documentary that we saw recently is called The 13th, and that's really excellent. Hey, hi, Melissa. Hey, hey, Joel. Hi, you guys. I just saw those comments. Hi, Melissa and Catherine and Ava. I see you over there. Um, so we watched The 13th, Ava DuVernay. Uh, highly recommend that and then on the queue oh in the queue now I'm not sure what's gonna happen next we've got um, oh I don't even know I don't I don't I don't even know what's next so many oh Ooh, okay so I'm putting a little bit of red in nice Hugs to you too. I love that big Dana Hills dolphin hug. Yeah, so I'm from, we went, I went to school in Dana Point and we are the dolphins. <laughs> That's so sweet. I love that. Um, okay, let's see. So I'm gonna hold up what I'm doing here. I just put some red down, which was a little crazy. I think I'm gonna blend it in. So this is a perfect opportunity. So let me show you what just happened. Okay, perfect teachable moment. So I've got this paint here. I just Put this red in right here. See this paint right here? Whoops, over here. And it's a little too much. So this is a perfect opportunity to take my finger, stick it in the gel medium, and just sort of blend out that red. It was a little too much. Okay, if you don't like it, you can take a paper towel. This is another trick of the trade. Just take a paper towel, wrap it around your finger. This is why I always like to have paper towels nearby because I use them for all this stuff. And just kind of dab. Because I teach this a lot in watercolors too. 
So you can remove paint by dabbing. And if you don't like it with, with acrylic, you gotta act fast because acrylic dries. You can also always paint over acrylic if you don't like something that you did. It's not the end of the world. Acrylic is, you know, especially with glazing since the layers are thinner. But I didn't like that red. It was a little too extreme. So I'm just gonna, gonna delete it a little bit. And um, it's all good, because I can even scrape it with my fingernail. But I'm gonna just leave that there. So this is what I did. I blended it, it dry, it's drying so fast. It's very hot here. So see, where was it? Right here. So this was a bunch of red, this was a bunch of red. And I just used my finger with the gel medium, kind of blended it in. That's why my, my fingers look like this now. <laughs> And I'm also going to go back in. It's, I'm sure it's pretty much dry because it's pretty warm. I'm going to go and get a chisel brush or no, 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 a smaller little brush, a round brush. And um, get some gold, put the gold on here and just go over that area again. And even the white. I have this nice white here that's been hanging out. And I'm going to mix it a little bit with the, the red and get a nice kind of pinkish. Ooh, actually, and the yellow. Okay. And yeah, so anytime with acrylic, right, if you don't like something or something isn't exactly how you want it to be and you want to refine it, acrylic paint is very forgiving because you can just paint right over it. You can just, it, it dries quickly and it's not water soluble. It's a closed system. It dries, it seals up. And uh, I mean, it's plastic, so it seals right up. And um, and then, like, I'm just using this nice brush I have with yellow to go around. And I like to do a lot of optical, optical mixing. And then I'm also working very abstractly and very uh, loosely and painterly. And uh, as you can see, I don't work hard edge. My paintings are very, they're very, um, you know, the edges are not hard. These are soft edges. So they are very, uh, there's a lot I can do to keep it fluid and flex. And uh, this is how I like to work. It's, it's an abstract, but it's also loose. And you know, you see the brush strokes and I love to optically mix. So um, I'm putting in some white now and I'm doing some more glazing. I'm just going over these little markings on the butterfly. And so what else, hello, hi, what else is going on with what are you guys making? Anyone want to share if you're tuning in? Hi. So as you can see, I'm making this butterfly painting. And I also share the art journal, mixed media art journal. And oh, I've been making shibori indigo bandanas. I've been really that was my weekend, so that was two full days of uh, outdoor work, working outdoors, because that's where you, I have, I really got to do it outside, and um, so I made 32, or 36 pieces this last weekend, Saturday and Sunday, it was crazy, just, I was up to my elbows and in indigo dye, so those are really fun, and I was inspired to do that because my dad asked for some bandanas that he could wrap around his face for face covering to go work in the wood shop at Cal State Long Beach when that opens back up at some point and probably just around on his walks and things. So I made, I made, I like to, when I do dyeing projects, when I take time to create a batch of indigo dye, which is a it's a big endeavor and it's usually an all-day thing a few things need to line up it needs to be warmer warm enough outside so that my fabrics dry so and also it does help to have the warmer weather because I am outdoors the whole time and I don't mean 100 degrees like it is now but like in the 70s and sunny it really helps um, I mean you can do indigo dyeing anyway I, I think it's best to do it outside to be honest um, I, don't, I don't know how, yeah, I, I have done some indigo dye inside, but we always dry our fabrics outside on clotheslines, so that's what I did, and, um, 
And so the inspiration came from my dad to, he wanted a few bandanas, but I like to do batch processing to really, really um, maximize the dye bath, to maximize the hours put into the practice and to really, you know, just batch process, small batch though. I'm not talking about hundreds of things or, you know, assembly line, but there is a whole multi-step process. And it is like, for me, it was a two day minimum. I may do more this weekend, I'm not sure. But um, I made, I ended up doing all of them. So face square bandanas. So those are cool. So those are going to my dad. He's picked out the ones he wants. My mom is getting one. And um, then I made some triangles too. So, cause I like to wear Nat, homemade, handmade, designed um, things, accessories and things. So, and I, I just love indigo. It's the best ever. And so I was doing shibori patterns. They are so beautiful. So that was really fun. That's been a really fun thing. It's been a while. I took a big break from doing it. And um, so those are set to be ironed and photographed and all that. There's so there's I haven't had time to do it yet, but there's like 30 something of them. And that's something that I also that I it's been really enjoyable to to engage in and the creative process. Um, yeah. And we are having a heat wave here in California. These are Santa Ana's, so it's been pretty warm. I'm sure everybody knows that who's living here. Uh, so yeah, it's been like, I don't know what it is now, 90s, 100, I don't know, it's warm. Let's see what else is new. Uh, so, okay, I'm gonna pull this up. Yeah. Okay. And um, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. I'm just going over with this burnt sienna, doing a little bit more glazing with the burnt sienna. And I've got to kind of redefine the head of the butterfly. So I'm going to hold up what I have in progress so far. Okay, so here's what I've got. So I'm just going over and creating those glazed layers. And um, yeah, and as you know, everybody, whoever's tuned in or um, maybe even later tuning in if I uh, post the replay, is I like to keep this live from uh, Waterfront Studios in the studio session. Let me just put this up. You can see my da 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 da. Um, to about under an hour so it's been about it's about 347 pacific here and so i'm gonna get ready to end this session and um i might do a little bit more powder glazing and i do want to work on this butterfly this this head here so i can show you that too i'm just putting a little bit of the burnt sienna on the head and the body of this beautiful creature. Okay. Oh, let me see. Oh, and a little bit of red. Okay, so this is an orange red. It's not, it's, it's actually quite, quite vibrant. Okay, let's see how we do. Okay, so here's what I'm working on. So yeah, I'll do a little bit more. Woo! Meow, meow. Okay, um, and uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah, so if you'd like to know of any other um, programming, like, hey, hey, Boris. Uh, films, I do a whole, I've written, a, I did a blog post in 2016 on an ongoing work in progress list of uh, female written, directed, starred in, female-centered, passing the Bechtel test 
films that I recommend so I can repost that that's a my blog and I've just been adding to that and uh, really focusing on female driven content um, and I add to that all the time there's so many amazing female written directed pieces work out there films out there and um, like 13th is directed by a woman Ava DuVernay DuVernay and um, and then I'm gonna start adding another category because I do you know watch something almost every few days every day every other day uh, to to educate myself to be educated to uh, I feel like education is the number one of the most powerful um, you know top ways to liberate is to be is to educate ourselves so I like to learn and I like to I would consider myself a lifelong learner so um, that's why I learn something every time I teach a class, whether if it's to one student or nine or ten. I do mainly, I teach small group classes right now, so um, the numbers are small, but I love that. I get to really focus on each child, and every time I teach something, literally, if it's one child, I learn something. I have a notebook I keep all of my notes in about what I learned. It could be anyway sky's the limit I'm constantly learning it's keeping me very busy um, and inspired and I think last I don't know if it was last week or the week before but there was a really great, great question about being stuck and unstucking our unsticking ourselves or un, you know becoming uh, more fluid if there's any stagnancy and creativity and creative process and one of the my viewers asked oh how do you get motivated how do you stay motivated and get motivated to create art and I said you know what I, for me because I have been stuck for sure um, and I have I mean big time I've, I've had moments and phases where I'm not making things and I would much rather make so um, but I realized that when I teach that teaching keeps me in the creative engagement and learning and inspired learning teaching learning creating all simultaneously really helps keep me motivated and so i just encourage you to find something that you like to make and that you can express yourself we can express ourselves creatively process and metabolize our feelings um, remain empathic if you're a natural empath like i am Remain sensitive, remain, you know, keep listening, deeply listening, deeply, you know, paying attention, staying aware, waking up, all these, all the important um, parts to being human right now, to being, you know, evolving as a soul, but also, you know, growing and becoming more aware and all that really I feel like in, if you're an empath if you're empathic and sensitive to, to 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 take care of your inner world and to do find a creative outlet that will allow you to express yourself and it doesn't have to be for commercial purposes or selling anything just like I was sharing this uh, mixed media art journal it can just be a way to metabolize to process to work through to play to have fun and to feel good and to find what feels good and so I've been really focusing on what I'm grateful for and just having a lot of fun playing so I encourage you and to do that oh I created this last week too I really like this so maybe that's what I'll end with it was so nice to be able to tune in I want to end within the hour so I'm gonna just end with this I'm grateful that I could connect with some friends and family and students and former students I mean and really just make this live connection with you I'm gonna hold up what I finished worked on today where I'm gonna finish right here um, the time does fly even though it is quite a long session too but um, so thank you for your attention, your time, and your energy. And um, I do like to tune in every Wednesday at 3 p.m. here 
with Art with Lorian in the studio live to connect and to create together and share and to keep the positive energy flowing. And I look forward to seeing you again. So thank you for joining me. And until next time, we'll see you in the studio. And there's Frida. She's up there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye.